Hi everyone, it's Christopher, AKA the Tattoo Quilter, and I'm so excited that you're gonna be joining me in my small space today. I'm here at Fat Quarter Shop to share my secrets on how to organize sewing in a small space. Golly gee, look at all of this stuff I have here on my table. That's a lot of stuff to have to store. Well, let me just tell you, living in 600 square feet is quite a challenge, but I somehow managed to make it work. My closet is actually turned into my little sewing studio. So I'm gonna walk you through how I organize my sewing tools that will hopefully help you organize yours. So what you start with is gathering some bins. Now I like these clear, you know, plastic bins. They're like a shoebox size. You can buy them at any of your local, um, you know, home stores. Um, you can buy them in sets. You can buy them in multiple sizes. I like the shoebox size because they stack nice together. Um, and you'll see what I'm talking about when we go to organize everything. So I pulled all of my notions and all my fabric and all my tools and stuff out here. And I'll give you my methodology of how I put everything together. So first, let's start with our cutting tools. So we have lots of them, right? You have multiple cutting um, rotary cutters. Uh, you have multiple scissors. You have like little snips. There's so many things. Put them all together. And that way, when they're all together in one box, you'll remember it. So let's see. Here's our little snips our scissors, our other rotary cutter, and I think that's everything for my cutting tools. So once you have all of your cutting tools in one box, just put the lid on it, give it a little snap, and then you come to your closet or your bookcase, whatever you have. It's best to have some sort of like little storage solution that you can kind of tuck everything away. Mine just happens to be my closet and I have some shelves in my closet, but I love this little bookcase too. So all you're gonna do is put your little box in there and let's move on to another one. So let's look at thread. So some of us have thread boxes. So where our Aurafil thread comes in its own little box. I like the shoe box size of the plastic container because it fits just in there so nice and neat. And you're probably thinking to yourself, well, Chris, that, that's storage on its own. Like that could easily just go on the shelf. Well, trust me, even if you put it on the shelf, you might forget it's there if it's not with its friends. I like putting friends together, like things together. So even if I have a thread box, I usually put it all in another little box to keep it nice and tidy. And then I just add my other thread spools in here. And if I have like a bobbin or if I have, um, you know, another type of thread that's for my machine, I usually put that in the same box. And then I just close the lid like I did with my scissors. And there you go, you're stacking them on top of each other. And I like that it's clear because you can see what's inside the box. You could also take a label maker and make your own label for this. So glue, we use a lot of glue from EPP to basting glue to, I don't know, craft glue. So again, putting all of your like things together will simplify everything. So we'll put our spray based in here. We'll put our EPP glue in here. And I think that's it for my glues. So I'm hoping you're picking up on the trend here of really just organizing like things together. I like to put together a little sewing box and the sewing box for me consists of what I'm using for my sewing machine. So how I'm putting my quilts together. So I'll use my tools for my machine. I'll put all of that in one box. I'll put my sewing machine needles in here and my hand needles in here, my hand stitching needles. I put all of those in the same box. And then because I use my wonder clips for binding, I put those in my sewing box as well. That way I know everything is in here that has to do with either my machine or any sort of needle all goes in one box together. And there's really no rhyme or reason to how you organize your shelves. Um, you could do it by, you know, order of how you sew something together. Um, you could do it by color if you really wanted to. Um, I just, I memorize where things are at so it's quickly for me to grab it. And then notions. So we have a lot of notions. I shouldn't say notions. I should say little things like knickknacks. So um, we have our vintage trim here from Lori Holt. I put all of that together. Any little ribbons, like if you use ribbon for a project, I put that in the same box. I have some little fringe pom-poms. Those go in the same box. And that way, whenever I'm looking for rickrack or any sort of pom-pom, I know it's all together. Same with my yarns. While this basket looks really pretty and I would probably just go ahead and set this on a shelf, um, this could get dusty. So you wanna protect your yarns as well. So I would put all of my chunky thread in a box. 
You could do it by color if you wanted to. So pretty all together. There you go. Now you can see how it's all organized there. Oh, I found, I found some more thread that I didn't know I had. Happens to all of us, doesn't it? So see, every time you purchase something or collect something, you just put it in the box that it goes with. So you do your thread box and you can have multiple thread boxes. There's a lot of really awesome things on the market now too for um, organizing your thread. There's one that has like little slots that you can put your thread in. Oh, fabric. So we all have a ton of fabric, right? So because I'm using a shoe shape box, it's perfect for fat quarters. And I love, again, using the clear because I can see what's inside the box. I might have to turn this one sideways. Oh, that might still fit. Put the lid on it, put it in our, our closet. And then I have some random fabric over here. I usually keep one for my collection of fabric. So if I have a collection, um, I'll put all of that together in one box, maybe with another collection. Or if I have some scraps, I usually do a bin with all my scraps in it. And then we have rulers. We all have a lot of rulers. So I make a box for all of my rulers. Well, that one doesn't quite fit. So all my small rulers can go together. And then any other random things that I have, whether it's, you know, English paper piecing, um, papers, any of my little tags, sewing tags, um, you could put those in here. Anything that's kind of random that you might not use all the time, you could make a little random box for it. It's called, a, like, growing up, we called it a, a junk drawer. It just kind of catches everything. Doesn't this look so nice and organized? And then that looks like it's it. So I think we've pretty much organized everything. I have a little bit more um, fabric to put away. Oh, here's a couple more little notions. So buttons. Buttons is something I would probably put in my little trim box um, because we would use those last on a project. And again, I love how quick and easy it is just to really put everything away. And then I usually have a box for props because, you know, in my photography, I love to show like little props and stuff. So I usually keep one or two boxes just for props, whether it's little trays or little trinkets or little fake plants. I usually keep those in a box as well. I also have this nifty little, um, oh, there's a ruler I forgot. Put this in our ruler box. I also have this nifty little cart that you can get at your home store and put together. Um, my mom had one of these a long time ago and I called it the Jackie cart because she was the only one that I saw that had one. But she used hers, hers for scrapbooking. I've seen this cart used for a lot of things from machines to um, people are putting fabric on it. I have some fat quarters on it and some half yard bundles. It's another great tool to use when you're organizing. You can even put your, you can even put your bins on here. You know, if you're going to work on a project, you can move this from room to room. It's just a nice, compact um, tool to have. And then in terms of your space, so if you're sewing, if you're sewing, you're keeping your sewing supplies in your closet, um, it's nice to kind of keep it a little bit separate. So for example, if you have a hanging rod and your clothes are on your hanging rod, then above it, the shelves above it, you could have all of your sewing supplies. And so normally I would have, you know, a couple of shelves of these boxes, and then I would have maybe some books. I keep my books out just so I can reference them pretty quickly. Um, you could also tuck these away in a bin if you wanted to. It's also great to go through and purge. Now, I know that sounds kind of scary, but honestly, purging feels really good. And what I do is at the end of every year, I go back and I look at all my supplies and my fabric. And if I find some stuff that I haven't used in that year's time, for example, fabric, I probably will donate that fabric. Notions I'll probably keep for a little bit longer, or let's say it might be two years and I haven't used a certain type of notion or a certain type of trim. I might just donate those or sell them to someone or give them to charity. So there's a lot of really good things you could do once you like step back and sort of purge through it. So I hope you've enjoyed this little video on how I organize my little closet in New York City. And um, yeah, you can get all of these notions and tools here at Fat Quarter Shop. And we'll see you soon.
Mm-hmm.